like t-shirts outside of concerts. See, that is a lie, though. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for bringing that up. This is another fucked up thing that's wrong with rap and battle rap. I was on 257 stations, right? They uh -huh. carried the news of my arrest. Only four of them carried the news of my exoneration. My mm. total thing. Like, wow. dude, I, I hired four lawyers. Mind you, four lawyers. I had a Jewish lawyer, a Swedish lawyer, and two Cuban lawyers. It was like a fucking United Nations. Whenever I went to court, I stood up and said, Mr. Cornell, your team ready? We all stood up. We all went up there. And let me tell you something. When you, I'll bring the police report next time I, I'll come in here. Right. It says the most absurd shit. It says, uh, at the end, no injuries reported. So the, the police report in the beginning says, immortal technique and, and a dozen assailants mercilessly beat down. Mercilessly. People. No injuries reported. So how did I mercilessly be? If but you know, no I can't say that reported. in court. When the case was going on, I couldn't say, well, if I had really wanted to fuck these niggas, <laughs> then, then something else happened. Right. We got a phone call from an investigator. Because remember, once the police have who they have and, and have their eye on someone, they're not going to do any investigative work. So I hired my own investigator, who was an ex-cop, who went out there, who ran the jacket of everyone who was involved and said, wait a minute, this person pulled a slip and fall in front of Bloomingdale's. This person is a grifter. This is a liar. Another person who was involved in the case, my lawyer called me nervous. He was like, hey man, uh, do you know that a person who was connected to the case uh, was murdered? And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, there was a murder in, in TJ and it looked like a drug deal going bad. And I was like, Yo, man, I ain't kill nobody. <laughs> yeah. Some fucking shit. Yeah, I, was, some t I didn't even smack this nigga. What yeah. the fuck are you doing? I didn't even hit nobody. I shouldn't even be in jail, right? So, but again, it yeah. turned out to have nothing to do with me, again. And the people said, this is nonsense. Of course it is. And then these trumped up charges, they just wanted money yeah, out of all of this. They wanted me to go there, have court dates, 11 court dates separately, until they finally said no. Now, we know what this charges. is about. The people don't know what this is about. Right. Uh, so maybe roughly about uh, four years ago, right. um, I was arrested and charged with uh, robbery and assault. And um, basically, it was, it was really interesting because at the time, uh, I was in the middle of a very successful tour, one of the best ones, totally sold out tour. Right. And I think that what affected it is that I saw the way that criminality and being and having a case affects the people around you. Right. In other words, without naming names, there are people that were in business with me that distanced themselves from me. Of course. And that really bothered me because I was like, man, these people that, you know what I mean, that never had me up in their home. And you start to put it to it together. Like, were we really always friends or was that, was it just business then? And that really hurt me because it was like, you know, if, if I can be honest here as a man and say, you know, it kind of hurts when you, you, you know somebody for so long and it's like, well, wait a minute. Now when I'm on trial, right, now you choose this time to step away from me? Right. Now you choose this time to turn your back on me? And right. you, you do realize that I'm fight that these people will offer me no plea agreements because they thought they had me by the motherfucking balls. They were like, no, we'll give you nine months. Again, but what were you accused of? A robbery and assault. And this is um, uh, in, from in Santa Ana, California. And, and the situation was not the first incident, too. Right. About two years earlier, I did a uh, uh, an event with people who were undocumented there, and they were workers, and they were city workers, and they were unionized, and this whole thing. Um, and then we were talking about the murders that had taken place in the desert, and how uh, law enforcement knew about the human trafficking and that they were getting cuts from it, all this stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, outside, they claimed my car was involved in a hit and run, and they towed my car. I went there with my attorney the next morning, just to make sure, because I show up now with the lawyer. I don't show up with goons. What the fuck are they going to do? Right. Fuck the cops up? No. no. But when I show up with the attorney, my client needs to know why his car was impounded. We need probable cause. We need the video of why this happened. Right. What happened? I'm sorry, it was a case of mistaken identity, <laughs> Mr. Cornell. It turned out not to be your car. Unfortunately, we can't waive the towing fee, so we'll have to charge you the $300 for holding your car in the impound overnight. But there will be no formal charges. Have a nice day. This isn't my first rodeo at Santa Ana. I know how they are. They're right. one of the most conservative counties in America. Right. So me going there and talking about this, me being involved down there with the people who, and I keep it real, it wasn't, I, this is, everyone who rolls with me, 
is down with this type of shit, even if they not from the same community. Right. So take a poison pen. He walked through the desert of fucking Arizona with me right. to leave water for, for migrant families that were rushing and hiding. Right. And the person who was also uh, loosely associated, but he was in the Arizona side, not the, not the border angels, which is the people we were working with, those individuals, they beat a case for that type of shit. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking, y'all charging me for this bullshit? Like, I know what you're doing. You're ignoring the, the activist work that I do. Right. And you're coming after me for some trumped up charges to make it look like I'm a criminal, like I'm a bad person. When you know that I teach in a prison, you know that I, I'm not a person out here starting random fights in the street. You know me from the battle scene. I'm always a person that advocates for conversation rather than confrontation first right. because I don't want to see too many people kill each other. Right. I'm a person who is incredibly vocal, especially on the West Coast, about not promoting anti-blackness in the Latino community because they want us to kill each other out there. Right. That's their fucking plan, and now they make it plain and clear. And that's not the future I, I, I envision for myself. I know people across the board in the activist community out there because the racial relations are very different on the West Coast than out here, right. and I'm committed to that. So to not highlight those things and to slander me like I'm a thief in the night, like I need $100 from someone. No, oh, come on, bro. But, but this was this was over t-shirts? Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. This is what this was about. We don't know what the, what the case, which is why I remind people when you mm -hmm. get in the public light, do not randomly think that there are no consequences even for the smallest thing. My, my attorney told me at the end, he goes, listen, I know you didn't have anything to do with this, but you can't even be near this type of stuff anymore. And he's like, I'll tell you a personal story from the head of the firm. The head of the firm has one client. He's a, a freaking billionaire. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He was, he was uh, hooked up with Bill Gates and Microsoft and all this. The guy's a billionaire. He's a, right. he's obviously not the richest guy, but he's got a few billion dollars. Right. Him and his wife are somewhere, and uh, they're on a bike, like those little 12 speeds. And he accidentally comes near like a bunch of people waiting for coffee at some little stand, and he touches his foot with the bike. And the guy turns around and goes, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, are you okay? And they say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. He goes, no, I'm really, are you okay? Like, I, I know I didn't hit your foot, you want new sneakers, I'll wipe your shoes, like just laughing and joking. Yeah. The guy's like, no, I'm fine, no problem. Next day. 10 days later, mm -hmm. they find out this nigga's worth millions. They, they, they want like $7 million. They sue this guy for $7 million, saying pain and suffering, you broke my foot. There's a hairline fracture. There was no hairline fracture, dude. <laughs> it was all a fraud. And, but they had to pay money to go find this stuff. So the guy says to me, he goes, Mr. Cornell, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I think it gets to the point where everyone has a measure of success where you realize that you're risking more by doing that. Now, mm -hmm. mind you, I grew up in Harlem. Mm -hmm. right? I, I learned to fight in Harlem. What's Not side? from ran people from the, the street. What side? No, from the west side. And my master was uh, Stanley Thompson, a former Marine. Uh, a black Vietnam veteran definitely had been through a lot of crazy things. And mm -hmm. one of the things I remember he told me is, look, would you ever jump in a, move, in a car that was about to go off a cliff, right? Just to slice someone's face or to punch them in the, in, in the nose. No, because you'd be killing yourself. And he goes, what do you think you're doing every time you're fighting out here in the street with these people? However, there's another side to that, he told me. And it's not the one that your parents and your guidance counselor, your teacher want to hear. He said, in life, you're going to find someone like that. They may not have hurt you, but they hurt someone you love. They did some terrible things. And you're going to want to get in that car, and you want to rip their fucking eye out or stab them in the heart and say, take this fucking with you for what you fucking did to my family or me. Just remember, he said to me, every time you get in that car, you lower your chances exponentially from coming back. So the first time, it's a 50-50 chance. Right. The second time, you're playing 75-25. And the third time, you have less than a 15% chance to make it back to your family. And now you have to ask yourself, what's worth more to you? Revenge or the people you love. And that's the real lessons you learn. Yo, that sounded like an ill-ass movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely <laughs> did. Nah, that, that, that sounded was... like, yo, like... But you realize... Do I get them or do I don't get them? This, like, this, you know what I mean? This is the art of war. This hot fuck. Trap, trap,
turn smack rapper Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers I'm in the hood with the work you heard Making fiends leave earth you heard Got your baby mama thirst you heard Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse This the wave you need to surf you heard Told Jim I need a bomb I could drop on you niggas Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest I solidify my spot with gorillas Now I'm rockin'